Tuesday, September 25th, 2018, we are looking at the upper level water vapor imagery for the continental U.S. We want to focus on today mainly is what some would have been dubbing uh, Florence 2.0 off the coast of North Carolina. What this did, it did, this loop don't go back far enough, but it went up and through came back around got squeezed out and kind of reformed now they're not calling this Florence anymore it's invest 91l or some something I'm not quite sure but we'll take a look at the visible feed and it's rained here since it's just it's it just won't stop it hasn't stopped all summer it hasn't stopped since February rain 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 and that's, I guess, for many of us, east of the Rockies. Now, you know, obviously they've always got high pressure and overseed out here out west. So, you guys are stuck in the drought. And they also guide these atmospheric rivers up and under California. Now, we'll take a look at the next rad reflectivity. This is from early this morning. We'll see the nightly ionization cycle. Heterodyning rolls. Now pay attention right here. I just seen you'll see uh, interference spikes coming from this transmitter in Moorhead, North Carolina. Right there was a big flash. Okay, after that flash hit, we'll be able to see it on another loop better. After that flash hit, we've seen this water, this these rain clouds just dissipate. So it kind of Let's get back to the other one from earlier today. Right there. And then you see see how these this precipitation evaporates. I don't know if they're trying to stop stop the rain or what's going on. But we see these interference spikes. I've seen Mr. Jim Lee made a video of it mm. earlier. I think it was last week or the week before when Florence was here about can Nexrad steer, is, is Nexrad steering Hurricane Florence? And, you know, other people was ask, asking about Nexrad and where do you find this information? And Jim Lee said that the only thing that he could come up with is what's called searchlight mode. And you'll see these interference spikes, just this line here. And they say if that pencil beam is on for longer than five minutes, it can heat that area of the atmosphere. And what do we know about heating and all that? I want to go over to my Facebook page because I just changed my uh, cover photo because I found some interesting photos. Okay, here's Mr. Uh, Mick West. All right, and he's debunks everything but here he may need to debunk himself on this one here we have a cooling tower plane and you know what, about hot air how hot air rises and you know I got the articles and all on that of uh, how uh, aerosol types here's a meme I made the first documented evidence that thunderstorms in China vary on a weekly cycle in tune with factory schedule schedules now what with the gist of this the article that i got it out of and there's a pdf study on it whatever uh is about certain aerosol types will suppress thunderstorms and others will invigorate them and i really like this one here because we can see the cooling tires here and just supplying this massive now you know when you're under and you can even see these uh rings shooting out from it now when you're below the ground here and there's this low level cloud cover or it's raining you're not seeing what's going on up above here so how do we know what these power plants and industrial plants are doing now here i like this one because this is most likely from a uh a plant a, some kind of industrial plant too because you notice how low this is in the background 
warm air, lighter than cold air, would continue to rise until it finds a matching temperature. If moisture is available, cloud formation occurs. If there is abundant heat available, the clouds will continue to grow upwards with the possibility for thunderstorms. So, you know, this is what I'm getting at. This is heated water vapor. And when Jim Lee was talking about these pimp pencil beams, these searchlight modes, when they are focused, like this one down here in Houston, we, I see it go off quite often. And oftentimes you'll, you'll see thunderstorms fire up right at the end of these beams or right along it. And so, you know, they can focus these next rides into different altitudes of the atmosphere and heat wherever. Because if you look at cloud seeding basics, it's, it's all about seeding uh, certain areas of the atmosphere with clouds that already exist. And, you know, they, it's all about heating. They supply the heat and boom, cloud grows. Now they can do it in other ways to suppress cloud formation. And, you know, I'm looking at them seeding clouds from the get-go. Like, that's what your chemtrails are like. They're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, more on the radar. So, what we're seeing here, like I said, you've seen this one, this one blast, and then you've seen the precipitation dissipate right there. And then you see it just, see it just disappear. There's a better look. You can see it kind of just get sucked away there. I don't know what they're trying to do, but, but anyways, about the pencil beam. Here's this one. This is Miss Kern images. And you see these heterodyning rolls come down. Oftentimes when I see these rolls meet up towards the end of this one in Houston, you'll see a thunderstorm pop up. So heterodyning is another thing that these next rats do. It's a combination of two frequencies to create a new more optimum or powerful frequency. Uh, we got more interference spikes around this transmitter and more head. And then I want to get into a PDF that I found of China using X band radar to suppress hail. In June 2008, the Beijing Weather Modification Office began to use X-band dual linear polymetric radar to carry out artificial hail suppression. Electromagnetic waves of radar will result in or, yeah, attenuation when go through the atmosphere clouds precipitation particles and the attenuation consists of two parts. One part energy is absorbed by the particle and the other is scattered by particles so that the original incident direction of electromagnetic energy has been weakened and then like you have your decay function down here and there's you know, more information you can go through it they got your examples of all that here I haven't really memorized all this yet but, you know, the function of recognized hail of X-band dual linear play an important role on hail suppression and can effectively reduce the losses caused by hail. So here is more proof that radars can be used for weather modification. Okay, so, you know, when we're seeing this, you know, I see these next reds bloom up every night where they're bloomed up with in them same areas we always get these popcorn cumulus and thunderstorms pop up and then we'll take a closer look what we got going on today we got lots of aerosols out in front of uh florence 2.0 you can see the wave rolls there was a good example of this yesterday surrounded by aerosols we see some planes going there at the end uh, 
That's all aerosols from planes. Locally, we just had a heavy thunderstorm. Lightning must have cracked a mountain right, right beside us. It was a big boom. And then what do we see all up in here? You can see all the gravity roll, wave rolls, the frequencies being blasted by these devices. There's so many of them. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, here's uh, Jim, another one of Jim Lee's sites, weathermodificationhistory.com. And this is a pretty extensive site. But I like this graphic here of 10 ways to control the weather. Ionosphere Keters, that's your harp, which there's at least a dozen of them around the world. Sounding rockets, which work with your harp. Satellites, lasers, cloud seeding, cloud ionizers, stratospheric aerosol injection, ship tracks, contrail induced cirrus, chemtrails, uh, water vapor pollution, which is what we got going on here. And there's at least 63,000 power plants worldwide pumping up water vapor every day. That's not including uh, other industrial plants, refineries. Uh, I mean, it's it's probably over 100,000, give, give or take. So what else do we want to get into? We got into about heat. Here was uh, from last year, Hurricane, I just shared this today, Hurricane Maria's eye. I seen two pencil beams coming off this transmitter and the eye of Hurricane Maria went directly over this next rad. And as you can see, completely destroyed it. What else do we want to get into? Just look at the filth everywhere. I mean, if you, I mean, they they call this accidental geoengineering, but we all know better. We know what's going on with with all this. I mean, you have to be an idiot not to know, or you're just completely ignorant and you're just believing the weather channel is, you know, oh, it's climate change, you know, because it's normal. It, hurricane does a u-turn and comes back around for round two oh look what we can see all through here nice grid patterns i mean this crap should be so obvious so obvious there's another one i mean i've shared most of this stuff before let me see here uh, here's an inverted weather modification. This is the American Meteorological Society. And what do they say here about? Oh, in warm, moist atmospheres, aerosols often invigorate deep convective clouds, usually resulting in greater electrical activity, stronger damaging winds, and a greater likelihood of flash floods. Studies indicate that aerosols might also modulate the intensity of tornadoes and hurricanes. And, you know, you get on here. And that's exactly what we're seeing everywhere. I, I for one, don't believe any there's anything natural left about our weather at all. Nothing. It's, it's horrible. It's gross. And, you know, the future's looking pretty grim. This is why I do this. People need to pay attention. Pay attention to all this crap. Then you got your ship tracks and all that. We'll see if I can find any. I had one opened. What was this last one? Now, nah. oh, this was from North Carolina. This is after Florence, and you see these black areas. This is all pollution, cold fly ash. Uh, I mean, just a cocktail. People's lives, everything you can imagine is washing out the sea there. Uh, there was one about, uh, yeah, here. I hope this loads pretty quick. And we'll let this next rad, we'll let that one load too. We'll go back to this one. Is it loading? Is it not loading? Now uh, we'll look at some photos of mine. 
hairs from today the sky cleared up briefly look here this guy just went through I guess this the sky wasn't moist enough just right right over here but for you know for some reason it clouded right up and started raining 15 you know it's just a corn trail and this the other day this here was horrible I mean I mean just look at this are, are these gravity waves these perfect little ripples running through the sky it looks like metal shavings hanging there if you guys can even see that you know, it's just I got years and years and years uh, about three maybe f going on four years of this So, you know, I've been paying attention to the weather. I've been watching all these radar loops, you know. I've been studying this for years. You can't tell me what I am seeing is, you know, natural or is accidental or inadvertent weather modification. This is intentional. Very, very intentional. Anyways, that's my report. I wanted to, I uh, didn't lay it all. I wanted to show the ship tracks here. I get to watch this. You can see the ships going. And then these they call gravity waves but there is islands there now when i see these happen out in the ocean with the islands like that's kind of believable but then right below it what do we see just just a freaking flow of pollution i mean for real and like i said here these ship tracks any given day and then they blend right in any given day you, you can get up into the north northern pacific really all through the ocean and you you can just just see all the boat tracks ship tracks whatever you want to call them it's gross all of our clouds are fake or polluted to death one or the other one or the other Anyways, that's my report. I hope uh, if you got any questions, uh, please ask me in the comment section. I hate having to make videos so long, but you know, really, to go through all this and try to explain all this here in one video, it's it's, it's not going to happen. But you can go over the Jim Lee uh, video or climateviewer.com and weathermodificationhistory.com and he's got it all set out nice and professional like and get to read and get on Google Scholar or type in weather modification geoengineering or like you know my buddy Pete Roman sends me sends me PDFs and stuff like here is. I don't know why it's scrolled to the bottom. Laser induced plasma cloud interaction and ice multiplication under serious cloud conditions. And, you know, here's some uh, edumacation for you. Anyways, that's my report. We'll check back in at a later date.